It's Movie Time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Listen to shows and read reviews at Gateway Film Center. <laughs> try I like that. that. You want me to do it from the top? <laughs> yes, sir. Right. It's Movie Time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Listen to shows and read reviews at gatewayfilmcenter.org. It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Kevin Carr. And this is... It's Movie, movie time. time. And this is Manny. <laughs> no, I don't know, Kev. Yesterday, you and I were filled with flatulence. Well, good. I mean, <laughs> that's a standard thing for me. I just, <laughs> no, man. I have to we had Swiss Army Man mm -hmm. and BFG. Yeah. Both of them that's right. fired. Yeah. By, they by, fired on all cylinders. Let's just say parts, that. Which yeah. means we've got something here for 12 year olds or yeah. not. Yeah, well, not Swiss Army. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. so what do you think about that? Well, you know, this is what's funny. As you mentioned, of course, the first thing you, you stampede towards is the flatulence. But but I remember when this movie first was being talked about, that's what everyone said. Yeah. It was Daniel Radcliffe playing a flatulent corpse. That's what you heard. And many people left Khan uh -huh. when it was first shown in the first for the first few minutes really? of that because... Apparently, because they were offended. Ah. By, I, yeah. I, well, but here, and here's the thing. Okay, well, first of all, the, the movie's about... <laughs> Paul Dano plays a guy who's stranded on a desert island, and this corpse washes on shore, and he is able to use the corpse for, let's just say, some amazing abilities. <laughs> like a multi-tool, or a Swiss Army knife, if you will. <laughs> yeah. And and it's him, and then, of course, the corpse, he starts to have a talking with the corpse, which a much better relationship than Tom Hanks in the volleyball. And and they have conversations, and you know he he, you don't know whether it's in his mind, or or what he's actually doing. It could be a just absolute insanity, <laughs> and that's the whole thing is that he that, that he requires the help of this corpse to do it. But the thing I found amazing about the movie, going back to the farts, whenever they had those, or whenever they had other things that were really gross, body fluid jokes and that sort of thing. The film is brilliantly orchestrated because they put such emotional weight on that well, that when he has that, it's exhilarating and sometimes tender and poignant. Well, don't you think this is a, a, an extreme variation of the buddy film? Yeah. Don't you think this is, I think this is so creative, yeah. so imaginative that you think to yourself, well, now narratives, man. Mm -hmm. In film, we've had them for a hundred years. What else is new? Yeah. This is new. Very new. And that's the thing. You don't see this all that often. And in, you know, in, a, in a summer that's plagued by sequels and reboots and everything. <laughs> Holy gosh. This is wholly original. But like I said, the I think when they made the movie, they said, when we get to the grossest parts, we need to put so much emotion and impact and, and, and critical elements that you can't that have that are so critical of the plot you can't remove them right. you have to make it so important and and emotionally grounded that they don't seem that they're not tossed off as a joke right, right which right. is kind of amazing and that's why shame on the people for being offended at that this is the way it is <laughs> and is as imaginative as it seems about a body mm -hmm. that has all of these functions going on yeah. a dead body and you begin to wonder if this body is has been resurrected, yeah, or whether it was ever dead. Is there something magical, or right? Is there or not? is there something not? And it's not answered for you. Yeah. Uh, and so it begins. What I think maybe where you're going, and I'm certainly going, is in the figurative interpretation. Yeah. That, you know that here's a guy who is suicidal. Mm -hmm. This is the Dano character. Yeah. See, uh, who is suddenly himself resurrected. Yeah. By a dead body. Well, in his relationship with Manny, yeah, Hank's relationship with Manny is, it, it Manny is him in the in the very literal sense, but he it, it's him emotionally. Sure. And 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 their relationship it causes him to open up. It causes him to be a more warm person, and 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 to, and, and again getting back to the body noises. This is just a fact of life. Everybody does it. That's that's what happens. And it lets him accept the sometimes crass and gross realities of life. Oh, yeah, which means in the end, or could mean in the end, life is worth living, mm -hmm. farts or not. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If this is going to be, and in fact, when he spits out water. Yes. That the Dano it's character takes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is very basic stuff going mm -hmm. on just to survive. Yeah. So there's a terrific, albeit sometimes humorous, mm -hmm. emphasis on the very basics of living. And in fact, uh, doesn't the Dano character yeah. have to teach the corpse about life again? Well, that's the whole thing is because... <laughs> He doesn't remember because he's a corpse. He's dead. Right, right. And I mean, some of the very basic things, but it, it's, again, a, a, an allegory of him kind of rediscovering it you for himself. It. And, and that's why it's brilliantly written. To sit there and say the Farting Daniel Radcliffe movie is one of the most brilliantly written movies I've seen this year sounds odd, but it is. It's yeah. an amazing... And I got to say, for A24 who released it, they... I don't always like everything they do. But I will say, they give you some of the most unique movies. If you can see that logo in front of a movie, you know you're getting something different. A couple of Daniels yeah. as directors yes. who were music video directors, right? No, uh, am I right? Probably. That's Before where, this. Yeah, that's where everyone cuts their yeah. teeth. Yeah, I know. And so this is really a, a, a very strong confirmation of their ability to pull off a great story yeah. with something that's completely different. Now, the only... The reason I'm going to have a minus on my grade, Kevin, yeah. is that the ending is it's just confused the heck out of me. I, not not to give anything away. Yeah. But how do you end a movie like that? I don't know. I, don't, I think you end it before you end it. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's some point at which they should have rather than... It than, reminds me a little bit of The Lobster, which yeah, right. the, doesn't have the same... The ending, the last half doesn't have the same impact as the no. first half. No. And, and you and I have talked about this before. I'm completely, uh, I have amnesia about endings because no. I guess by the time I get there, I've got it. Yeah. And I know how difficult it is when you do something really creative mm. to end it sensibly. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, it's, and when I say how do you end it, you, there's there's several different paths. There's a, there's only four or five real choices you can right. make, and you can dress them up however yeah. you want. No matter which way you go, you're going to disappoint somebody. Oh, yeah. You know, you, whether you do something, whether you make a declaration or you don't make a declaration or you just end it, it's it's going to have a problem. And, I can, and I've learned over the years to forgive that in movies. Oh, me too. Because, yeah. uh, you know, especially when there's so much humanity to it. Oh, and there's so much that has gone before the ending yes. for me that I, 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 I can... Now, Calm let's down. take a classic, BFG. Yeah. By a classic director, Steven Spielberg. Never heard of him. <laughs> he kept... Uh, <laughs> this is adapting yes. a very famous child's novel, mm -hmm. right? Roald Dahl. Okay. And about a big, friendly giant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it stands for. Uh, right. For all, the, all you Doom fans out there. <laughs> yeah. So, we know that one of the writers is Mel Melissa Matheson, mm -hmm. who died. She yeah. also did E.T., mm -hmm. and I imagine quite uh, quite a few others for Steven Spielberg. She worked a lot with Spielberg. Yeah, she yeah. worked a lot with him. So, so Kev, I mean, we just talked about a great film, mm -hmm. Swiss Army Man, opening today, as well now as BFG. Does it stand up next to Swiss Army Man? They're very different movies. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I would talk about, I mean, they're, they're really, if you're going to want to talk wholly different movies, with the, the, the through line of the farts, maybe. Yeah. But the, other than that, it's it, they're so different uh, mm -hmm. that they're impossible to compare. Now, to say BFG, I never read the book, uh, but I love Roald Dahl. He did Charlie the Chocolate Factory, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Matilda. Oh, and Fox is yeah. one of my absolute favorites. Tons of great children's classics, and this one is is very charming. It's and you know it almost feels like it should be a holiday movie. It, it feels it like it should have come out yeah. in like November. Yeah, but uh, it's very sweet about this girl who meets this giant kidnapped by her actually in a, in a you know in a very nice way and it, it escalates to sort of silly proportions at times uh, mark rylance does a great job as the giant a great job kevin this academy award winner all right from bridge of spies he's his new tom hanks boy uh, and i'm telling you what what spielberg does to coach mm -hmm. even this great actor into a memorable character and so different from Bridge of Spice. There was so such understatement oh. and quietness in Bridge of Spice. This is much bigger. No pun intended, but it's much bigger for <laughs> Oh, for my God. And I like the little girl. She's very She's cute as heck, oh. Brit. They even have the queen mm -hmm. in this movie. I mean, they've got everything, and you're right. It's going kind to of devolve into mayhem, yeah. particularly with the nine other very bad 
Giants. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you compare it to other recent Giant movies, it's way better than Jack the Giant. Killer. Okay. My, I wasn't 100% sold on this. I thought it's a longer movie. It's almost two hours. Yeah, it and is. It, That's right. I don't think it needed to be. It, it, it does seem to mark time for the first okay. half. Like, okay. I, I got, I, I was like, okay, yeah, okay, we're in Giant Country. Yeah, okay, there's a big whatever. They get to Giant Country uh, cu They get to Giant Country pretty fast. Yeah. Within 10 minutes, she's oh, yeah. out of the orphanage. And he's taken her to Giant Country. That's pretty cool. Yeah. For the kids in the audience, I noticed yeah. that most of them stayed mm -hmm. in, in my audience last night. Yeah. All right. So I think there's something arresting about it and they're moving it as quickly as possible. Yeah. To get to what the kids are going to enjoy. And it's neat in Giant Country. It just it's I think it overstates its welcome before the movie takes a very different turn. And then once the movie kind of turns in, into the second half, uh, second half, really, I guess this would be the third act if you really want to be specific. When it finally gets to that, the, the last part of the movie, it's interesting and different and it, it's silly uh, and, and I like it. But like I said, it just, it, it was, there was a lot of the opening. There was a lot of that second act. The second act is, is a slow one. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, regardless though, mm -hmm enjoyable yeah uh i i i have not read either the original yeah but i think that this is something that anybody who hasn't read it will enjoy it's spielberg once again looking for home mm -hmm. uh and you have engaging characters yeah. and great actors the effects do break down a couple times okay there's some times where it just looks great yeah and and this is the problem when you have a fully photorealistic human looking i mean almost there's, I mean, he's slightly, his ears are bigger, and he's Well, this is weird. They capture done. motion, isn't it's it? It's mocap, yeah. It's, but you get that Uncanny Valley, and sometimes they got him looking great, and there's sometimes where he looks a little bit plastic, which you see in, in mocap performances now and then. Yeah. Uh, so we still haven't gotten past that. But I mean, for the most part, it's, it's a special effects movie, for sure. All right, so this is a great day for summer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a great day for movies, mm -hmm. and we've had two, Kevin, broken yes. with my tradition here only because I had you as my guest. Was I capable of doing this? And the first one is Swiss Army Man. Kevin Carr, what grade would you award this movie? I'm giving this one an A. Oh, it, right. It's probably one of my favorites of the summer. <laughs> and I am giving it an A minus if I've already expressed my reservation. Yeah. All right, a little bit tougher. BFG, Kevin Carr. I'm going to give it a B minus FG because okay. of the slower and parts. It's it's not Spielberg's best. It's not Roald Dahl's best, best, but it's still charming and fun for kids. Pretty close for me to being a great film, but not so. But I'm I'm a B plusing it. Okay. All right, Kevin. Oh, what was that noise you just made? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm blaming Daniel Radcliffe. 